Hello, welcome back to Access. Joining us today is Doug Healer, who is the producer on LEGO Dimensions. How are you, Doug? Nice I'm to see well. you. well. Good to see you. Now, when I first saw this game, before E3 actually, yeah. uh, we saw all the licenses that that game had. It was all very exciting. But for me personally, when I saw that you had Doctor Who in the game, I got incredibly excited. And now at Gamescom, you finally revealed a bit more about what that means for LEGO Dimensions. So what can you tell us about Doctor Who? in this game because sure. it looks amazing. Well, we've got a lot of Doctor Who content for any fan out there, and hopefully we're introducing Doctor Who to even more fans that yeah. come to this game. Uh, but for starters, in the starter pack, you get an entire Doctor Who level yeah. that's part of the main game story experience. So this is a story that's being told through the eyes of Batman, Gandalf, and Wildstyle. <laughs> and of course, this is the first time they've ever met anybody like the Doctor. Sure. And uh, so it's a fun introduction to the Doctor and sort of a fish out of water story for these three characters. What happens to these three guys is that they are stuck in a time rift, yeah. and the Doctor, only the Doctor can save them with the help of his TARDIS. But of course, before he can completely save them from this rift, they're going to have to go on a journey through a few of the different worlds of Doctor Who. Yeah. You know, one of those being the Cybermen world. Nice. Uh, and that's what we're showing in the demo currently. So that's an entire level uh, of Doctor Who content. And, it, and, and that's just in your starter pack, right? Of course, we're offering additional Doctor Who content for anybody yeah. who's a big fan who wants to go out and get even more. We've got the Doctor Who level pack, which includes the 12th Doctor minifigure, nice. the TARDIS mini build, as well as the K9 mini build. Nice. So those are the yeah. toys you get in the level pack. And what the level pack unlocks is not only does it give you access to the Doctor Who adventure world, but it also gives you a brand new Doctor Who bespoke story level. Okay. So this is a whole new level outside of the main game campaign. Right. That's just its own standalone mini adventure with Doctor Who. So featuring and starring the Doctor and a big cast of characters who I won't reveal today, yeah. but a lot, a lot of friends and enemies from the Doctor Who Amazing. universe that you're gonna encounter in that world. And I saw in the trailer, am I right in thinking that there's more than just the 12th Doctor in the game. You got it, yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you've ever played a Lego game, you know yeah. no Lego character ever dies. No. They regenerate, <laughs> yeah. right? And how lucky for us, you know, we've got the Doctor who yeah. regenerates. So every time you lose all your hearts in the game, the Doctor naturally regenerates Amazing. to his next form. Now, awesome. you start as the 12th Doctor, so what yeah. that means is if you die as the 12th Doctor, you come back as the first Doctor. Amazing. So all the way back to 1963, <laughs> at the start of the very first uh, uh, season of Doctor Who, you get to play as the very first Doctor, Fantastic. and then, as again, as you progress, you go through the second, third, fourth, and so on, all the way through all 13 iterations of the Amazing. Doctor. Amazing. Yeah. Well, it must be really exciting for you to see all of these worlds kind of collide in sort of like feels like the ultimate Lego game because you've had you've had Lord of the Rings you've had Star Wars yeah, you've had yeah. all of these things before and now, now they're all coming together I mean how challenging is it for you to not you know lavish too much attention on one or make sure they all you know have the treatment that they deserve and they all feel authentic as well yeah well that's a great question so if you look at our cast and our lineup of brands I mean I, I really think that you you think about what comes in the starter pack. You've got, you know, Lord of the Rings represented yeah. there with Gandalf. You've got the Lego movie with Wildstyle and Batman, of course, representing DC Comics. We've done standalone games for each of those three yeah. properties. I think outside of that, everything else is a new property for a Lego video game. Yeah, yeah. So this is a first time, and that was really important. Like, this is our chance to get to play in so many different worlds that uh, may have not gotten the opportunity previously to have their own standalone game. And what better way than to have this great mashup adventure where we can have a lot of fun with yeah. these, these different properties, but also give you, in some cases, these standalone game experience. So mm -hmm. you do get sort of your own mini standalone game experience with the Doctor Who level pack. Same thing with Portal 2 or with uh, the, the Back to the Future series or Ghostbusters series. We've got level packs for all those, those really cool properties and we're excited to roll those out. You know, working with all these different brands has been a blast. Yeah. Uh, it's been the fun part and the, quite honestly the easy part of the job this round. You know, Lego is just sort of that universal language. Everybody knows what a Lego toy can do. Yeah, yeah. We all love them. We've played with them since we were kids. We still play with them as adults. You know, there's no stop and there's no end for the Lego toys. And, be, you know, being able to bring that love and passion into the game world has just been an, an amazing experience for me. Fantastic. And Lego games are renowned for their humor. Yeah. Um, I guess having a mashup of worlds lends some opportunities to create, you know, really unique styles of humor. Yeah. Uh, I remember, was it pre E3, we saw Batman and yeah. Gandalf on the yellow brick road and Dorothy came in and yeah, Scooby-Doo's yeah. in there as well. I mean... And you have Batman you know, meeting the Scarecrow yeah. who, oh, you know, he, yeah, yeah. He forgets or, you know, this is his first time. So, of yeah. course, he 
what this is all this this must be a hallucination you know yeah. that the ca scarecrow is responsible for so and like also talking of dimensions we've got actual real lego as well yeah. which is an amazing thing to be able to build actual physical things and have them inside the game so you know where, where did this idea come from and how exciting is it to see it you know finally come to fruition yeah well it's been a it's been a big game our biggest ever undertaking at yeah. tt games and, and warner brothers games um we you know we knew coming into this category that we would have to do something really special uh and unique to set ourselves apart from the competition and and that really came down to you know, we knew we had this great element, Lego toys, which yeah. already have an inherent sort of known play value to them. You know, kids already understand what a Lego brick can do yeah. and how you play with the Lego brick. So how can we bring that into an actual game experience and blur that line between digital and physical play? Well, that's where the toy pad comes in. And that's where we spent really, you talk about what was the hardest piece. It was getting that, yeah. getting that right and being able to build in a lot of new features and, and mechanics and technology in, so it was more than a simple reader device, it, it is an actual interactive toy. It's yeah. part of that toy experience. It's, it's, you can see it's branded as a Lego toy. This is part of the Lego family now, yeah. and it belongs in there, and it's what allows you to play and interact with your toys in some really special and fun ways. Not only can you manipulate them physically in the world to solve puzzles, to move them around the screen, to change their colors, give them new powers and abilities, but it also allows you to actually rebuild your yeah. toys into new exciting mm. models that the game can then put you know, to life inside the game world. I was gonna ask about that because that was one of the things that really struck me when I got my hands on it before E3 was, you know, for people who aren't quite sure how these systems work, can you give us a little bit of insight into you know, how you will be playing the game moment to moment? You're solving a puzzle and all of a sudden you've got to upgrade a Lego piece. Yeah. It's not something you do in the game, you, you do that in the real world. Yeah, so here's here's an example, right? Yeah. So in the starter pack, you get all the bricks you need to build the Batmobile. Yeah. And you know, the Batmobile is a fantastic tool. It gets you really quickly from point A to point B. It also gets you through some dangerous zones and other hazardous areas. Uh, so it's a great all-around vehicle that any character can use. What's even more fun is when you get to that point in the game, and, and this is really just, there's no sort of key or locking mechanism. It's all based yeah. on how you as a player decide to spend your hard-earned gold bricks and Lego yeah. studs. So as you collect uh, you know, your currency throughout the game, your Lego uh, gold and silver studs and, and those gold bricks that we talked about, that's gonna give you the ability to unlock new instruction manuals. And these are digital instruction manuals in your game, but they look an awful lot yeah. like those paper instruction yeah. manuals you get in a box of Legos. So what happens is you unlock a Lego uh, instruction manual, and now that Batmobile can be transformed into a new vehicle, which is the Bat Blaster, and that's the second model. So we've got one, two, and yeah. there's yet a third model oh, that that Batmobile can become, and each one of those has unique, special ability that allows you to progress into new areas of gameplay, and none of it mandatory. It's really up to you as the player as to when you want to do that and how you want to do it, how you want to upgrade your vehicle. Uh, it's really fun, and that's true for every single vehicle in the game, whether that's the DeLorean, or the TARDIS even can transform three different ways. Batmobile, DeLorean, TARDIS yeah. in the same game. It's, it's all there. It's unbelievable. <laughs> like uh, one of the things that really struck me when I was playing it was how you know incredible it felt to go from playing a, a video game. All of a sudden, I was there for a good ten minutes just tinkering with actual bit of Lego. You mean? Yeah. I mean, this game is going to bring out the the ten year old kid in everyone who plays it. It never gets old. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I am a, I'm a grown adult, a dad of, of kids, I've got my family and I still love playing with Lego toys and I'm really looking forward to playing this game with them. They're excited, they know I'm working on it. Yeah. I've been keeping it, holding it back as much as I can, but the, you know, we're all just really excited to jump in and play. Amazing, well Doug, thank you so much for your hey, time. You're so man. welcome. The game is looking thank fantastic, you. I can't thank wait you. to regenerate the doctor just all the yeah. time. I'm doing that all the time. Uh, leave a comment, let us know what you think of the game and don't forget to subscribe because we've got absolutely loads more coming up from Gamescom.